All right, day four of our little free course, Seven Days of the Shadow. And today we are also going to talk about an aspect that can be a shadow side of ourselves that often we can actually feel like is a beautiful side of ourselves. And we don't quite understand how that side, if motivated by the wrong thing, can actually be something that's very harmful and can cause a separation of our true self with the overcompensating and trying to be who we think we're supposed to be. And so today we're in the point of the course where we're really moving up the energetic anatomy system and we're moving into the space of the heart. And we're gonna to talk today about being the savior, being the hero. Now again, this feels like a wonderful thing and I know there's been times in my life where someone has shown up as a hero or a savior and I've greatly appreciated it and it seems like exactly what I needed in the moment. However, there's a tendency for us when we don't want to face certain parts of ourselves and we don't want to really be seen when we would rather be invisible or when we're trying to prove that we are worthy of love, when we're trying to prove that we are good enough to be loved. Sometimes what can happen is we can try to prove our lovability by what we can do for others instead of who we're being. Anyone listening guilty of that, just take a moment to take a deep breath around it because it's a big one. Where do I think I'm only as good as my last good deed? Where do I think I'm only as good as what I can give people? Where do I think I'm only as good of a parent as how well I make sure my kids physical needs are met? Where do I think I'm only a good partner if I'm really, really giving? Where do I think I'm only worthwhile if I'm giving money to someone or giving a service to someone? I'm not allowed to just show up on the planet and just be because that would be taking up space and I'm not allowed to do that. I'm not worthy of that. I have to prove myself by what I do. How many of us think that we have to prove that we're a good artist or a good actor by how many jobs we book? How many of us don't believe if we haven't booked a job in a long time, we start to get that sinking feeling like maybe I'm not good, maybe people will think I'm not good. So there's this proving energy that comes up in the savior that we really, really want to look at. So sometimes we pervert love and responsibility by taking on being the savior. Because when we take on being a savior, we automatically put the person that we're saving in the role of the victim. We're automatically telling someone there's something about you that needs helping if I'm coming in to save you, which is actually a disservice. It's actually not really loving. We are often, when we're in this role, motivated by our own need to be important or our own need to be needed. So if I'm busy doing a lot of things for you, then maybe you won't leave me. So I'm really soothing my own fear of abandonment by doing something wonderful for you. We can feel superior to others when we feel like we're bestowing affection or bestowing a gift or giving something to someone that we think that they need. It allows us to feel powerful. We can also buy love from people so they won't punish us or hate us or cast us aside or judge us or talk about us behind their back. And the main reason many of us get into savior mode is because it allows us to deflect looking at our own issues. If I am so busy over here looking at your issues and looking at how I can help you solve your issues, then I don't have to face mine. I'm busy. <laughs> And some of us were raised in families of origin this way, where maybe primary caregiver had a lot of their own issues going on, but it was always deflected and taking care of me and talking about what was wrong with me and talking about what needed to be fixed about me. So under the guise of being a helper or you know, doing something productive or doing something wonderful or being a hero, the savior actually is always abdicating their own work and their own responsibility when they're giving from a falsely motivated place. So this is an opportunity to just get present. Hmm. When 
do I show up and offer service because I want to? And when do I show up and offer service because I want to get something from it or I want to avoid looking at something else? This is not different than going around on Facebook and acting really proud and really excited for people and building other people up and not really meaning it. Just doing it so that you look good. What's the difference between being good and looking good? And often we think if I look good, somehow I'll be good. We think it's a protection or a shield somehow. So when we're busy saving or helping other people, here are the things that we get to avoid. And you can just see if any of these uh, feel resonant for you. Maybe even closing your eyes and listening. When I'm busy saving or helping someone else, I get to avoid feeling like I don't deserve good, but maybe if I do enough good, I'll deserve good. I get to avoid feeling that I'm not enough because if I make someone else feel enough, then maybe I'll feel like I'm enough. I get to avoid feeling like I'm a bad person because if I'm doing all these things to help other people, I must not be a bad person, right? I can, I can prove that I'm wrong. I get to avoid feeling like I'm broken because if I fix someone else, I won't have to notice that. And I get to avoid feeling that I'm not lovable because if I love someone enough, if I give them enough love, they'll have to love me back. But that's actually not love, that's transactionalism. And so as artists, we do try to people please and prove our goodness rather than proving our talent. And how many of us are guilty of walking into that audition room and making it deeply personal. This is about if this person likes me, accepts me, or rejects me. All of a sudden, the character of Annette or Bob that I'm playing goes completely out the window. I've completely thrown the character I'm playing outside to serve myself because I really need them to like me. I really need them to pick me. And if they don't pick me, it's a personal attack on me and not about my talent or my work. We become a magnet for martyrdom when we do this because it's the only way that we can prove our lovability. And we get into this vicious, vicious cycle where um, no amount that we give feels enough to fill the void of the unworthiness and the unlovability. And so the shadow that we actually want to accept is the parts of me that don't feel lovable. The parts of me that feel selfish the parts of me that don't feel good enough. Those are the parts that need my love the most. We also really get a chance when we're playing the savior to hide. We can get complimented by people. You're so great. You're so wonderful. You've done so much for me. <laughs> You're so selfless. You're so giving. And that feels so good for our ego. It's like a wonderful little pat for the ego. And then we feel, oh, no, I am good. But when we're busy proving our goodness with what we can do with our outer actions, we're always going to need another outer action to continue proving our worthiness like someone addicted to a drug who needs to take more of the drug to continue feeling high. So what we will realize very, very quickly is that we're addicted to the substance of the ego fulfillment and not full of actual self-love. And that's a big trap to fall into. Because if you're addicted to ego fulfillment, then every action you take, even if it serves someone, even if it helps someone, even if it saves someone, is completely motivated by filling a void inside of yourself and not by care of the actual deed or the actual thing or the actual project. And so it's not that it's wrong because something good still comes out of it, but it's false. And you never get to know yourself as truly lovable. You never get to know yourself at all. And this is the cycle that we like to call always striving, never arriving. And just feel if that's resonant for you, that no matter what you do, you never get where you want to get. 
no matter how much you give, it's never enough to make you actually feel satisfied. It's a constant bottomless pit and it can never be filled. And so we want to honor and bring in the part of yourself that feels that deep void and stop filling it with what will never fill it. So I invite you, if you're ready, if you like to close your eyes, to take a deep breath and get present to the fact that no amount of good that you do will ever prove that you are not inherently bad. But there is a space inside of you that knows that you are not inherently bad, that you are inherently lovable, that you are inherently worthy, that you are inherently good. And that place wants your attention. So I invite you to imagine that there's this lovely elevator that can go all the way down from your brain listening to this right now, and it can go all the way down into the space of your heart. And imagine those elevator doors open with a ding, and you soon find yourself in the space of your own heart. And as you let those elevator doors open and you arrive at the place in your heart, allow yourself to see what is here for you. What does this space of your heart actually look like? Is it full of light? Is it full of nature? Is it full of roses? Is it full of monkeys swinging from vines in a jungle? What does your heart space actually look like and actually Feel like just let your imagination play and create and tune into the place of you that is absolute complete unconditional love imagine that your heart can appear before you like it's an animal or a person, or a light source. So it's as if you're looking at the energy that is your own heart in its purest form. And as you look at it, it feels exciting, it feels light, it feels free, it feels airy, it doesn't feel this heavy, toxic energy of having to fix itself or prove itself or be better than itself or make anyone like it. It's so free. It's dancing. It's playing. It's joyful. It's fun. So connect with this energy of your heart, this place inside of you that already knows its worth, that already knows what it is. There's nothing to fix. The only thing that needs to be integrated is the part of you that's already whole, that's already love, that's already light. Allow yourself to really feel this space and ask your heart, what do you need from me? What have I withheld? What have I not given? What have I been blind to? Let your heart answer you. It's not trying to save you and you are not trying to save it. You're whole and complete. allow yourself to play and to let go, to be in the space of enjoyment of your inherent lightness. Your inherent good. Your inherent joy.
keeping your eyes closed. You can allow yourself to drift up and out of this scene if you like. But as you do, stay connected to the heart. Stay connected to this place inside of yourself that's always available to you and ask it, what are the most lovable things about me outside of what I do? What are the things that are inherently lovable about me? Taking whatever you hear and just really letting yourself breathe that in. Maybe placing your hands over your heart, bowing your head to your heart to seal that in. I hear you, heart. Thank you for your wisdom. When you're ready, lifting your head tall and proud and opening your eyes. And so moving forward, we take the to-do list and transform it into a to-be list, where you've been busy being a savior to try to prove your lovability or prove your worth. Now there's an opportunity to say, what did my heart tell me was most lovable about me. Not, not what I do, but just who I am, what I am, the energy, the essence that I am. And can you make this list? And can you prioritize this list that you show up in service to those things every single day? You show up in service of yourself. Because the one place you can be a savior and you're called to be a savior is for yourself, not for anyone else. You can't save anyone and you wouldn't want to. And no one can save you and you wouldn't want them to. What you have inside of you is a to-be list of everything, every strength, every beautiful thing inside of you that wants your attention and wants to be cultivated. And that is the only thing you have to do.